G, the amp envelope generator, and the amp time knob. Okay, so if we want to access the amp envelope generator, what we need to do is, of course, press this button here, Kapow. Okay. Now, here's the thing that I have figured out that is very helpful. You'll notice that there is an empty circle next to filter envelope generator, and there is a full circle next to amp envelope generator. Now, what I assumed was that that circle represented this button, but that circle does not represent this button. So when you have it off, you might think, oh, well, don't I have access to the filter envelope generator, which you do not and I have it on, then it'd be the amp, but then it shows the filter. So you're like, what? Okay, but what that circle is representing is this shift button over here. So you press this button to access both envelope generators, and then the one that you, uh, the one you're set to will be indicated by a whether this is lit or not. So right now it's not lit, so we're on the VCF or filter envelope generator. So now that it is let, lit, you'll notice we've gone down to the amp ADSR and that's what that indicates. So that's where we set the amp envelope generator. And uh, during the demonstration videos you've seen up to this point, I've just had this setting where sustain is at 100. So when you press down a note, you just get a sustain note when you take your finger away, it goes away. This is the best way to demonstrate timbral elements, but now we're demonstrating the envelope, so we need an envelope setting. So let me just make one here. We'll give a little bit of an attack time, a, a big decay, well, not that big of decay, a little bit of sustain and a little bit of release. Okay, so. And then I'll release my finger and it's gone. Okay, so that is as easy as it is to set the amp envelope. You can hit both of these buttons at the same time. Pow, you're there. You can set it to whatever you need it to be. I have noticed that to get the effect, like just now I played a note and it went away when I had turned the sustain up while I was holding the note, I've noticed that you need to kind of let go of the note so that so that the changes take effect. So if I do this while I'm holding it, it's still happening, but if I take my finger away, then there will be no sustain. Yeah. Um, so that's just a thing. I don't know if that's really a big deal, but if you're not getting the effect that you expect, it's probably because you need to let go of the note so that the envelope settings can adjust. But that is how you basically set these. Now, uh, we have, of course, you'll notice just like in the filter section, there is a time knob that you can adjust. And here it is right here, aptly marked amp time. It's amp time. Okay, I made that joke in the last one. I'm sorry. So uh, now what you have is a situation just like we saw in the filter where you can change the time values of your ADSR. So if I turn to the left, that's going to get shorter. And if I turn to the right, it's longer. Now if this was a sort of synth that you didn't have presets on, then uh, that would be really helpful because you could take a sound and you could alter, you could very quickly go from one type of sound to another. Like we could have the amp time all the way over here and we could have the waveform be the FM. 
and then we could whip it over to the sawtooth and whip it over here and have a long string sound. And that's really well, you could still do that. And that might be actually faster than going through the uh, preset loading process, which we haven't really talked about. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's a really cool function. I've seen occasionally you'll see like on ancient Yamahas, a switch that will multiply the envelope lengths by 10 or something. And that's basically what you're that's what you're looking at here when you turn to the right is it's just a multiplication of the times associated with the AD, S, and R, which is really cool. That's a, well, probably not the S, but uh, the AD and the R attack decay and release. But uh, that's a really fun and useful sort of thing. And I'm hoping <laughs> that we have the ability to modulate that when we get to the modulators because then you'll that gives you a lot of functionality. Now, I do want to point out that uh, you have basically, now you have these two envelopes, the VCF envelope and the AMP envelope, and they can be different, which is cool. So you basically have two envelopes. And uh, you can adjust them independently so that you have a different filter setting and a different amp setting. Now you'll notice that our EG level is at zero over here and it's still somehow the envelope generator is working. That's because the this EG level is only for the filter. So if you don't have any filter thing going on and you start turning that, it's not going to make any difference. Your amp doesn't isn't affected by the EG level. The EG level is just constantly on for the amp. Uh, so that explains that. But you can, you know, it gets fun to mix and match the amp time and the filter time. So, so now we have a mixture of our relatively slow amp and our sort of punchy um, filter setting. So uh, if we start playing before the amp envelope has gone back to zero, we can hear more of the punch of the filter, but if we're starting at nothing, like right now, we go through the whole slow amp envelope. But you can, of course, mess with that by messing with the amp time. Now we've made the amp envelope shorter, so we can start at zero and get more of a sound. turn the amp time up and it's going to do its thing while the filter envelope is still being, you know, it's a little punchy self. Now we can do the same thing with filter time. Now we've lengthened out the filter envelope and we've vastly shortened the amp envelope. And you get a wide variety of different types of sound. With a switch like that, uh, compared to what the actual filter settings are and the actual amp settings are, if you just whipped over and flipped on the uh, oscillator setting, you can come up with very different sounds incredibly quickly. <laughs> So what Dreadbox has done here is really they've created a very simple way to make very different sounds very quickly in the context of uh, a small, inexpensive analog synthesizer, which is uh, kind of a cool feat. This was a really clever design. And when you have that, you don't necessarily need all of the functional controls that you might want uh, or might be expecting because there are these interesting 
and expressive shortcuts that they've sort of built into here to allow you to do these things. So that is how the AMP envelope works and how the AMP envelope and the filter envelope settings work together for unique and different outcomes. Mm -hmm.